sigla. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear friends in Christ, at the dawn of this most holy day, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites folk throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. We remember his death and celebrate his resurrection, confident that we shall share his victory and live with him forever in God. Gave your name to Moses from the burning bush. By the blessing of this new fire, bring us with awe on this holy ground, our eyes alight with the glory we have seen in Christ, and our hearts aflame with resurrection joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us now listen attentively, recalling how God saved humanity throughout history and in the fullness of time sent Jesus Christ to be our Redeemer. Reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from the gods swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was good. God called the dome sky. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was good. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, Plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, 
And there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for the signs of all of the days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild things of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the work wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild created animals of the earth, and e over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Confit mini domino, quoni ambono. Almighty and eternal God, you created all things in wonderful beauty and order. Help us now to perceive how still more wonderful is the new creation, by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
done for us, bringing us out of Egypt. Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. The Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell me your name. Confitemi Domino, Quonia Umbonus, Lord of steadfast love, by the power of your mighty arm you once delivered your chosen people through the waters of the Red Sea and gave us a sign of our salvation through the waters of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may rejoice with Miriam and Moses in your saving work. Through Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
your labor for that which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that which goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent. Confite me God, by the power of your word, you have created all things, and by your spirit you renew the earth. Give now the water of life to those who thirst for you, that they may bring forth abundant fruit in your glorious kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time and all ages belong to him. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds. May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Thank you. 
May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
risen, alleluia. Let us pray that the risen Christ will raise us up and renew our life. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and shine as a light in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stage this moment with great fanfares and the ringing of bells, but the recording of the event that Christians believe utterly changed the world is accompanied even more dramatically in Matthew's Gospel by earthquakes and lightning in the form of angels. This vigil service is sensitive to the drama of this scene, and yet the most important moment has occurred before the noise and celebration, the moment where the dark is penetrated by a small, pure light. The new paschal candle is sung into the darkened church with the words, the light of Christ, and in the ancient exultate, we pray, grant that this Easter candle might, may make our darkness light. The drama of the stone having been rolled away, the visitation of angels, organ fanfares and noisy bells all happen in that moment of witness when the two Marys went to see the tomb. It is the revealing dawn of the new day and the woman's faithful presence to witness that allows the joyful and fearful drama of light and sound. And yet this event which shakes the earth has already happened. God was not in the lightning or the earthquake, but was a quiet presence already wandering the garden, preparing to meet Mary and Mary, whose hope and fear and joy had sent them running from the empty tomb. They do not find Jesus, but the risen Christ finds them. The new day had dawned and yet light had already pierced the darkness of the night. While it was still dark, God had been working. It may have been the day that brought the news, but in the deepest night, God was doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. When we cannot see a future, when our way is unclear or grief and loss overshadow us, God is there. When we have fallen short of our own hopeful sense of who we could be or where our life might take us, God is active 
imagining what we cannot imagine for ourselves and forgiving what we are sure could never be forgiven. When we despair of the pain and suffering in the world and wonder how peace can ever be known in places darkened with war and terror, God is already present, a glow of loving presence in the midst of pain and a flame of courage in those who long for justice. We have completed our journey through Lent. In our hemisphere, Lent does not naturally point us to its meaning. The word comes from an old English word meaning to lengthen because the days are getting longer as summer approaches. Yet we too, even with our shortening days, can see the symbolism of the growing light in our hearts as we allow the Spirit to give us grace and help us release our attachment to things. Perhaps some of those things represented by the symbols you saw me burn in the Easter fire and turn to God with lightened hearts, ready to welcome the bright new day. What does it tell us that God's work is done in darkness? I think it reveals the truth that our liberation is achieved not by our own works, but by the God of grace who can accomplish infinitely more than we could think or imagine. We do not need to be more repentant, nor more virtuous, nor have the strength to drive away our own darkness in order to find the light of Christ and receive the mercy of God. This is the day, after all, as the exalted proclaims, that has given us back what we have lost beyond our deepest dreams, making, making even our sin a happy fault. The darkness as a place of new birth and new life reminds us that there is nowhere that God's light and love cannot penetrate. There is nothing that God's light and love cannot redeem. Christ is risen from the dead and his flame of love still burns within us. Christ sheds his peaceful light on the world. Christ lives and reigns forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. time we come to renew our baptismal promises. Let us pray. God of new life, we give you thanks that we are made one with Christ in his death and resurrection. Pour out your Holy Spirit in blessing that this water may be a sign of our new birth in baptism. May we continue forever in Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, through this Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in his baptism so that we may rise with him to new life. Now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us reaffirm the promises we made in baptism. Do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? I repent of my sins. Do you renounce all that is evil? I ask you now to re reaffirm as yours the faith of the church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
All who have been baptised and confirmed are called to study the Bible, to take part in the life of the church, to share in the Holy Communion and to pray faithfully and regularly. We are called to share with others by word and example the love of Christ and his gospel of reconciliation and hope. We are called to love our neighbours as ourselves, to honour all people and to pray and work for peace and justice. I invite all of you to commit yourselves anew to this calling. We will gladly do so in the strength of the Holy Spirit. God, our Creator, rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Spirit and forgiven our sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. May God keep us ever faithful to our calling, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. O risen Lord, who in your first appearance to Mary was mistaken for the gardener, be present with us and show yourself to us in all of our mistakes and uncertainties. O risen Lord, who appeared to your dejected disciples on the road to Emmaus and opened to them the scriptures so that their hearts burned within them. Be present with us and set our hearts on fire with love for you. O risen Lord, who gave to your distraught followers the assurance of healing and forgiveness, be present with us and bring together all Christians in harm O risen Lord, who mindful of the needs of your disciples, prepared a meal by the Sea of Galilee, be present with us and make yourself known to us in all acts of hospitality and sharing. O risen Lord, who in your final appearance on the Mount of Olives, lifted up hands of blessing on all people, be present with us and grant that our prayers today may be taken up into yours on behalf of the whole world. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. Alleluia.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings to your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains which has been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Come, let us celebrate the feast. Hallelujah. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome here.
pray. Most glorious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness to the resurrection and show your glory to all the world. Living God, make us apostles of the risen Christ. Give us joyful hearts, words of hope, and grace to recognize the Lord Jesus when he meets us, wherever we are on the road. Wonderful to be with you this morning. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen alleluia. We have another service at 9.30, which you are also welcome to attend. But let us now just sing, Yours Be the Glory. Stay with us for a special celebratory Easter brunch. Let us go now with an Easter blessing. The blessing of the living God who brings light out of darkness be upon you now and forever. Amen. The blessing of the risen Christ who sends you as apostles into the world be upon you now and forever. Amen. The blessing of the Holy Spirit who fills the church with joy and praise be upon you now and forever. The blessing of our God, the holy and glorious Trinity, be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.